So let's go over the parameters. Since we've done the startup, I wanted to go through the parameter list and, and, and review a few things that you, you may or may not know were there. So, so here's all the parameters and here's where you can select the different categories. And to make it easier or to, to make it sort of structured, I'm just, I'm just gonna go through the parameter group groupings and, and make note of those. There's in the basic display, I use this for troubleshooting. I mean, obviously you can see how fast the drive's going and you can see right now my potentiometer on my drive is my commanded speed. So that if I go over here and change this speed, it should go up. And I went ahead and moved it up a little bit. It's, I, I moved it all the way up, didn't I? I didn't realize that. Um, so now it's commanded 60 hertz. So it should run at that speed command. But quite frankly, you don't even need to run it. Honestly, this you can adjust your speed reference. If it's an active speed reference, you could adjust it and say, hey, look, my drive should come up and run at 59 hertz. So I know my speed is right. I don't, I don't have to run it to make sure my speed reference is correct. And obviously, if you do run it and it don't reach the speed, it's going to fault because it's going to do everything it possibly can to get there uh, until it burns itself out or, or overloads itself enough to fault. There's all your fault codes. Uh, there's, some, there's some pretty cool stuff here from a troubleshooting standpoint. The status parameter really help. It tells you the drive is not running. It is commanded forward. It will tell you if it was accelerating or decelerating, or it will tell you if the safety circuit is active. Um, if I remove the safety, that bit would go high and it would prevent me from running. The control source here, if you notice, and this is what I love about CCW, if you click on the parameter you, and you hit the help button, or you can click the help here, it gives you more detailed information about that parameter. I'm gonna expand this out. And if you notice, it said 15. So the first digit, which is the furthest digit to the right, said five, start command is over ethernet. I didn't, so my start command is over ethernet. And it said one, five, it said one uh, drive pod is my speed. So it had zero, one, five. If I close this out, Notice it says 15 here. So there's a good way of knowing without even, again, without even running the drive, you can click on this parameter, go look at it in the manual, open it up and determine where your speed reference is coming from and where your start reference is coming from, start commands coming from. Your control status is basically the, whether your inputs are high or low. And in this particular case here, uh, Bit three tells you if your DB trans transistor is on or not. And then the, the other digital input status is the remaining terminal blocks, the remaining four inputs. You can tell whether they're on or not. So you could check your inputs but without even having to run the drive. You know, you just say, hey, look, this should be on, is it on? Just kind of food for thought and very, very neat to, um, to be able to, to see without actually having to run anything. <clears throat> So here's where I want to talk a little bit about uh, energy savings. The drive has some parameters inside, elapsed kilowatt hours, uh, energy saved. If you click on this parameter, double click, open it up, it says total energy savings of using the drive compared to an across the line starter since the last reset of the meters. So you, you can obviously reset these meters. Now these accumulated savings are not resettable. You click on that, it says total approximately the approximate accumulated energy savings of the drive compared to using a cross line starter. So this is an accumulated energy savings. It doesn't, it doesn't appear to be resettable at all. But in order for these to work, you notice mine has nothing in here. So if you go to the program parameters, and I'm gonna go straight to it, there's an average kilowatt hour cost. You have to enter a value here. Most people, what would you say, 0.06, six cents a kilowatt hour, it ranges anywhere from four to seven to eight, depending on the plant, depending on what part of the country you're in or what part of the state you're in. But just put a value in there, whatever, you, whatever your average is. And, and as you run over time, you'll start to see these fill in. And it's, it's, it's viable data. So it's, it's just good, good data to collect. So that's, that's, the, that's part of one of the parameters I don't think anybody really pays attention to. From a basic programming standpoint, 
if you see a parameter, I'm not, the drive isn't running now, but if you see a parameter is grayed out, that means it's basically, it's either a read only parameter or a run read only parameter. So you can't edit it. And since I'm not running, um, they're, they're grayed out because I can't edit these parameters. These are all display parameters. When I go to the program level, basic program, you'll see they're either white or green and obviously not green, but the yellow. The yellow ones are the ones that I have changed from default. I'm gonna change this back to the keypad because when I do my demo earlier, later, I'm gonna use the keypad on the drive as my start source and leave the drive part. part. So, so anyway, these are all of the uh, basic program parameters. As, as you can see, and let's talk about motor overload current and motor FLA. I set them the same. So if you click on motor overload current, and I get asked this question actually quite a bit, what do I put for motor overload current? So whatever values in motor overload current, here's how it responds. The drive will fault for an F07 motor overload if the value of the parameter is exceeded by 150% for 60 seconds. So you could set it anywhere from 0.1 to 200% of drive rated current. I just choose to set it for motor overload. If you want to set it low or you can do that, but I, that's just what I've done. If you can choose, if you want to choose to set it higher, you can. If you think your motor can handle more overload, you can do that as well. It's all, all dependent upon what you think the needs of the, of the load are and what the motor can handle. I also note that it's very important, again, you fill out the poles and the motor nameplate data correctly. It's got to be accurate. So from a basic parameter standpoint, uh, the only other thing I wanted to note was there are three different feed and start sources. Start source one, start source two, start source three, speeds reference one, two, and three. And these are all controlled, can be all controlled by inputs, terminal block, visual inputs on the drive as to which one to use. Speaking of terminal blocks, I'm gonna go to the next level, which is the terminals. And I'm about to run out, so I'm gonna try to breeze through this real quick. Um, here are my opto outputs. There's something here, I, this, uh, there's a new parameter here. It's not in the manual, parameter 74. If you double click on this and you hit help, it doesn't give you help. It go it defaults to parameter one. So in order to find out what this parameter was or is, I had to go to knowledge base. And what it is, is basically the fraction of the above parameter. So if I wanted to put at frequency and I wanted to say, I want it to, I want it to come on at 40.5 Hertz. Um, before, before this parameter was here, I only had 40. Now I can enter 40.5, it adds these together. So that's what that F stands for is the fraction of the whole number. You could put 0.75, anything up to 0.95, 0.9 I believe, yeah. Can you put one? No, you can't put one. So just food for thought, that's not in the manual, but now you know. Same thing for the relay outputs. We have brake delay, on delay, off delay for brakes. This parameter does not apply unless you set the stop mode to ramp plus EM brake, electromechanical brake. If you were to set stop mode to electromechanical brake, then these, these values would take effect and you would probably need to adjust these times. So remember when my safety faulted, when I cycled power and my safety faulted, here's where it is, parameter 59, parameter 105 enables or disables that fault. I'm gonna leave it enabled because it doesn't hurt me. Um, and if you have a fault, actually a fault on your safety circuit, you can say, I wanna cycle power to reset it or I just wanna hit the fault clears. Uh, I think by default, it, it's left, yeah, it does, it's left it uh, power cycle reset. So let's move on to communications. I'm not gonna go too much over the communications other than this is where I set my IP address because it's kind of outside the realm of this, uh, this basic class here. I will say that you can add data links here to the drive. You can add four, in, four parameter data links for that parameter uh, in and out. And we're gonna go over this a little bit too, when we, or quite a bit when we do the premier integration class in a couple of weeks, so come back for that. Logic is what I'm gonna go over in the wizard. So these are the step logics. We'll talk about that in the wizard. It's just quite a bit easier to do these in the wizard. Here's my advanced display parameters. You can look at some, some more high level kind of stuff. You can look at how far the encoders traveled, um, all kinds of stuff. Something to note here, 
and this is different in this drive, parameter 552, program lock. In the PowerFlex 4s and 40s, you just simply locked it or unlocked it in the parameter. You didn't have any password protection. Well, now, parameter lock, you can put a, a four-digit password in here to, to lock the parameters and nobody can edit it. And you can make it a full lock or a keypad lock only or a custom lock. I haven't played around with custom lock or keypad custom, but I'm probably if you're going to lock it, just lock it all down. Another kind of neat thing to look at is drive ambient temperature. You can see all this stuff here. It probably falls under some of the troubleshooting kind of stuff. So that's kind of neat to, to be able to see some of these higher level uh, excuse me, this is the wrong parameter. If you set this, if you use the, one of the fans and you put this drive in a higher ambient, this isn't where you actually read, this is how you set it. For, by default, it's normal, so normal ambient. You can set it for 55C, 60C, 65C plus fan kit, or 70C plus fan kit. So it will derate the drive automatically, okay? I do apologize for saying that on the display, I think under the basic displays where you actually see the drive temperature here. So, but, but if you are running the drive in some extreme ambient uh, conditions, that is the parameter you need to go in and change. So it'll derate the drive properly. Okay. So I think that's pretty much it from a parameter standpoint. If you go on down, you'll start seeing some positioning parameters, and we're going to go go over that. But this drive, you can you can home. These are all positioning type level parameters, encoder tolerance, uh, find home, find home direction, that sort of stuff. 